Hi everyone and welcome to the Freight Loop. Myself and Hind are here to take a look at the current performance and outlook for the Asia-Europe trade. We will be using our interactive container capacity insight tool to show you all the latest market indicators and our five-week outlook. Hind, could you kindly kick us off by walking us through the current outlook for cancelled sailings, transit times and the amount of effective capacity deployed on the trade lane? Hi Chantal, sure. Let me share my screen. So this is the Container Capacity Insight Interactive Platform. By zooming in the cancelled sailing page reporting the major east-west trade lane and selecting Asia, North Europe and Med Trade, we can see that we forecast for the upcoming five weeks 11 plank sailings and 8% cancellation rates. Taking a closer look, Ocean Alliance is taking the lead with five plank sailing lined up during the five coming weeks, followed by the Alliance with 4 and 2M with one blank sailings announced so far. Similarly, only one cancellation has been announced in the non-Alliance services. Obviously, these pictures can change slightly as we approach the month of April, with possibly more cancellation to be seen. For this reason, the CCI is on a weekly refresh cycle, keeping us in the loop with the latest market twists and turns. Now, Speaking in the effective capacity deployed on the Asia and North Europe and main trade, our year-on-year -year chart show us that around 1.4 million TU is expected to be deployed in March and slightly over 1.6 million in April. That's 11 percent mouth-on-mouth increase and 8 percent jump year-on-year. Moving to the transit time, things have been on a roller coaster since the Red Sea crisis and the rerouting via the Cape of Good Hope, especially for the Asia-Europe trade. This chart maps out the best case transit time from Asia to Europe on a weekly basis. You can see a steady climb since the beginning of the year, hitting a peak of 33 days in week 11 of 2024, roughly 11 days longer than the previous year. Thanks, Hind. So clearly a lot going on. So when we look ahead at April, we can see that there is an increase in effective capacity, reduced council sailings. And when we take into account demand, this is translating to a reduction in ocean freight rates on the main Asia-Europe trades. It seems that the trade is now rebasing itself as the Red Sea situation embeds itself into the schedules. Given we have more capacity entering the market in the second half of the year, it looks like carriers will find it increasingly hard to drive through any spot rate increases. Hin, do you agree with that? Absolutely, Chantal. Looking ahead, it seems the operational hurdles steaming from routing ships via the Cape of Good Hope will gradually ease up for carriers and shippers. As you rightly pointed out, space is available on ships. Thanks to new delivery coming into play and despite the capacity taken up by additional ships in each service to maintain weekly frequencies, the outlook is promising. There is no apparent issue with the empty equipment availability and no dramatic congestion at ports, so I think it would be difficult for carriers to raise the rate further. In fact, spot rates are already dropping since the start of February. Thanks, Hind. I hope you've all found this useful. And if you have any questions, please reach out to the supply chain team who will be happy to help. Once again, thank you and goodbye.